Let's talk about closing day and what to expect. Real quick, hi, I'm Jeff Chubb. I'm a retired investment banker turned real estate agent, and I've sold more than a thousand houses. And I'm Dimitri Kersner, partner with Kersner Fuchs and Hell, and we handle a variety of real estate matters here in Massachusetts. Dimitri, what's the most important thing to know about closing? I feel like this is going to be a stupid one. Well, <laughs> if you're a buyer, you need to be present, believe it or not. You need to uh, carve out some time during your day to be available to come in and sign some paperwork. If you're the seller, you don't need to attend at all and you can pre-sign and the rest is handled by us under power of attorney. Also, buyers need to be there. I mean, that's a big part. That is okay. Correct. So what type of time commitment are we talking about here for closing? So the time commitment isn't really huge. Um, there was a misconception. You got to take the entire day off work and be present for the full day. That isn't the case. Uh, the closing process itself, once you arrive to the time you're done, is no more than 30, 45 minutes. Sometimes a little faster if you're able to do an electronic signing or partial electronic signing uh, with a lender in advance. And that's huge. Thank you, COVID. I mean, we can thank COVID yes. all for that one right there. Helps everyone. Yeah. <laughs> so also keep in mind, you will have already done a walkthrough prior to arriving for closing. That can be done either the morning off or the night before. So that should take bunch of stuff off your plate, especially if you've done your walkthrough the night before. Right. And and we have a video on, you know, what to expect and walk through how that goes on. But we always recommend to do it, you know, the night before a lot of times, you know, not like three days or four days before, because if I, this actually happened one time where a frozen pipe happened in the house and luckily they did the final, the, the seller moved out on Sunday. They did the final walkthrough on Thursday. We were closing on Friday. And it happened sometime in between. I mean, if they had closed and done that final walkthrough on Monday and then closed on Friday, they would have owned that that frozen pipe. So, you know, and then there will also be other issues that you want to do a final walkthrough because we're going to bring them up at closing if they left behind a bunch of debris or, you know, what else? Well, unless a lot of times you have sellers moving out the day of closing and you really should be there once they're fully moved out. Right. Uh, you know, because maybe the mover put a hole in them. Of course. Yeah. Right. What about the financials? Can you talk about them? I mean... They're, when, when exactly is it that they're going to be made available to the buyer that's buying the house? So in this age of disclosures, um, a lot of your financials are available to you three days, three business days or more prior to closing. Now, those typically are not your final figures. Your final, final figures are available about 24 to 48 hours prior to the actual closing uh, date. And... In case of the seller, same thing. You usually find out about a day or two prior to the sale date as to what it is you're getting. I mean, you can work up good generalities of course, and, yeah. and estimates for them. So if you're a seller, you have an idea of how much you're expecting. If you're a buyer, you have an idea of how much you need. You know, And re remember that the amount that you're bringing to closing is minus the down payment that you've already given them. That's calculated right into your final closing figures. Yeah, so the amount you're bringing is a, is a final net amount after what you've prepaid. Um, or any credits that you're due to receive from the seller or vice versa if you're crediting to the buyer. Okay, so what about the rest of that down payment that we're talking about, right? When is that due and how should those funds be provided and to whom should they be made out to? So the funds are always made payable to your closing agent or my office, for example. We don't want the check or wire going to the seller because right. you don't want those those funds to be gone. Uh, so the certified bank check, which is required or wire transfer, needs to be provided to us at closing. Now, that means that you should be generating a wire transfer probably the night before or maybe very first thing day off. Right. And so a lot of it's even day, day before, right? Yeah, it depends on your bank. So most banks can process a wire transfer instantly. Some lenders, some banking institutions, sorry, uh, can take one to two business days. So you need to be mindful of that. If you are getting a certified bank check, remember, to make sure your bank actually has a branch here in Massachusetts. Okay, just thinking this. Right. Uh, we've had a bunch of instances where somebody is closing tomorrow and realizes that, you know, their bank doesn't have any physical office. Both there. branches in Connecticut. Right. And, and you got to drive down, down there. there. So in that instance, you need to worry about a wire. Otherwise, you can walk into any local branch and they'll give you a certified bank check right there. Comes down to the, you know, proper planning prevents poor performance. Sure. You know, this is something that you will have wanted to at least look into beforehand. Uh, real quick, talk to me about wire fraud because it's a real, real big thing that happens now. Throw some caution out there in regards. To so yeah, wire fraud is everywhere right now. It's it's 
crazy as to what's going on with it in terms of who is getting impacted and how much money ends up costing people at times. So we do not typically just accept an email with your wire information, nor do we just say, hey, wire to me and we'll see you at closing. We require you to call back and verify the um, wiring instructions. Um, a lot of times I will warn everybody in advance, if you receive an email from me saying, sorry, I gave you the wrong instructions, that is likely a hacker. Right. Since we our escrow account is what it is, it doesn't change from closing to closing. So it's physically impossible for it to be wrong. And and like on that, if you get the email, obviously this is kind of dumb, but you know, don't call the number there that's on the email on the footer. Go back to an email they prior know right. is your closing agent. Look at that phone number. Call them off of that number. I mean, these guys will literally break into people. It actually happened to my mom. She's an agent down in Delaware where uh, somebody got a hold of her, a hacker got a hold of her you know, account information, figured out what her active deals were, sent a buyer being like, hey, you need to provide a, you know an extra $10,000 deposit. Otherwise, the deal fell apart. And luckily, this person picked up the phone and called my mom being like, Billy, is this word doesn't sound like you. Yeah. Um, it's it's a real thing. So it's something, and we're talking about a ton. Of and, and it impacts everyone, attorneys, buyers, real estate agents. Uh, so always be cautious. Always read instructions and, and follow up on uh, these matters. I typically um, notify you right away if the wire is in or not. And then it kind of gives you a red flag of, it's been a few hours and nothing arrives on it. Yeah. yeah. So make sure that that is a secure process on all ends and don't just, you know, look at your phone and say, oh, sounds like they changed instructions. Let me send it over here. Um, so that's a, an important thing to keep in mind. And that creates a hiccup in a deal. Yeah. All right. So what else do I need to know about closing then? Well, um, bring ID. You can bring your own pen if you like, but you don't have to. Correct. And uh, be ready to sign a bunch of paperwork. You know, I've... I always question why do you need an ID, and then it was somebody they, they they gave the example where somebody was a divorce, and he was there, and he brought in a friend who pretended to be the wife. They asked for the ID. They're like, oh, forgot it in the car, and then they never came back. But just like the wire fraud, this is what a deep fraud looks like. It's a crazy world. So definitely do that, and then uh, we we explain everything to you at closing, so no one's going to come in and tell you here, sign a bunch of paperwork, and see you later. We go through the process, we explain the documents. We answer any questions. And be excited because you're about to achieve an absolutely enormous accomplishment. If you're thinking about buying or selling a property, then reach out as it would be a true pleasure to talk. Yes, I only work in Massachusetts, but I have qualified, very qualified actually, associates all around the country that can help you find that perfect property. And let me know if you should have any legal questions in regards to any real estate. I'm here to help you whether you're buying, selling, or refinancing any property here in Massachusetts. You can also reach me at youtuberealestateagent.com and just fill in your information, then we'll reach out to you. And you can also find all of our contact information, mine as well as Dimitri's, in the description below. Until next time.